Illawi is the nightmare matchup for any top laner. If your loading screen looks like this, it's time to sit by tower and pray to Mark Merrill that he gave you a good bot lane that can carry. But I have found a master player who instead plays Illawi mid. This is a completely new style for Illawi that lets her set up even more tentacles in a special pattern, laning against much easier matchups to become an even bigger monster that can 1v3 no problem. He even has a new build, specialising in making her easier to play, as well as having a new game plan with special hidden tricks that have helped him climb. This video is sponsored by Displate. Displate is a really special art website where all of the pieces are printed onto metal. First off this makes them look super high quality, the colours are incredible, but it also lets them use a super easy mounting method. You don't need any tools or even to use nails that leave holes in your wall. Displate gives you a sticker that you can easily apply to your wall and a magnet that goes on top. The Displate is metal so it easily pops on and can be moved around to straighten it up, so none of that messing around to make sure it all lines up. You can always just rearrange it. Display also has League of Legends themed art. I got these pastel Japan artworks for my office. They're all the large size which is perfect to fill a wall. If you want to check these out they're available linked on my profile in the description. And Display also has a ton of gaming art, Marvel, Star Wars. The site has over 1.4 million artists so they have a ton of topics. Displates make a great gift for Christmas, and for every displate sold, the company plants a tree. So it's like a double gift. Use my link in the description and get a discount. 23% off if you order one or two displates, or 29% off if you order three or more. This discount is applied automatically at checkout. Link below. This is Badook. Well, his account name is FPX Badook, but I think he might still be a bit embarrassed after Worlds. Badook's story starts in Season 9, when he was a simple meta player, playing ranked solo queue in mid lane. He loved playing mid, but since it's so popular, he continuously got filled top lane instead. Eventually he got bored of this and accepted his fate, swapping to main top. One game he was matched against an Illawi. Playing Garen at the time he got completely rolled, losing incredibly hard. One game was enough to convert him, picking up Illawi out of hatred and deciding to use it against everyone else. For this entire year he one tricked her with over a thousand ranked games just on Illawi. He told me he played more Illawi than he studied for school. By season 11 he was struggling to climb, so decided to get some coaching. He wanted to go back to mid and maybe pick up a new champion, so he chose Anivia. The coaching really helped him fix his issues, again reaching his peak rank on a new champion, but still he could not progress. Anivia actually started to lose him more LP than he was getting. He needed to swap champions fast. He thought about the matchups that Anivia was losing mid, and remembered his Illawi, knowing he could beat those mid champions easily with her. So he began to play mid Illawi, spamming it and finally hitting master for the first time, even reaching 230 LP. LP by the end of the season. But is Illawi mid actually good? Are there any reasons to play at mid instead of top? Actually, yes, mid might be Illawi's best role. Her biggest strength is her 1v1 power. She's incredible at laning and can easily outlast the enemy in a battle of attrition, out poking them, out sustaining them, and thus out farming them. Illawi mid is not the typical boring meta champion that leaves the lane as often as possible to roam to bot lane. No, Illawi takes advantage of these roaming meta champions, destroying them in lane and building a huge advantage for herself. Illawi mid starts the game off very strangely, walking to this wall and just standing there. There is a reason for this because he does the same thing every game. In top lane, best case, Illawi can get two tentacles down next to her, ready to assist her in any fight or to hit the wave. Illawi mid however can place four different useful tentacles, one on each of the mid walls, to create a box of death. Setting them up at level 1, he stands next to the wall until they spawn. By the time the wave arrives, he'll have his passive ready again, so moves up to place it down on the side he believes is the safest. Having these four tentacles set up means that wherever the wave is, Illawi can kill it super quickly, giving her good wave clear. She's also ready to take any trade or fight as she has backup ready. But early levels are not Illawi's strong suit, so at level 1, Baduk takes Q, he uses Q on the melee minions for CS and to poke the enemy mid at the same time. At level 2, Baduk takes W, helping him get CS and using the tentacles he has set up for extra poke. Whenever Illawi uses this on an enemy champion, the huge AoE tentacle will attack once, and you can even do it with multiple at once for more damage. At level 3, Baduk gets possibly the most annoying ability in the whole game. Morgana Q gets a lot of complaints about how it's a big hitbox and 3 seconds of CC duration, but Illawi just laughs at that. With a 16 second cooldown, when this ability hits, it creates a clone for 7 seconds that Illawi can hit to transfer damage to the target. If she can kill this clone, Clone, they get marked for a further 10 seconds and slowed. So that's 17 seconds of being punished for not dodging one ability. Oh and I mentioned the cooldown, 16 seconds, so then it's back up. The cooldown starts as soon as she uses it, so if you hit it, it only gets more annoying for the enemy. You can see why Baduk was converted.
piloted. Of course, this ability is not easy to land, but with his thousands of games, Baduk has found a very easy way to hit it. The E doesn't go through minions, so to counter Alawi you need to stay behind them, but what Baduk does is use Q to clear the wave, immediately throwing E so that it goes off just as the wave dies, catching the enemy off guard because they thought they were safe. This sets up a great low risk trade. Early on you can also use this double tentacle hit combo. When you land an E, your tentacle automatically attacks. As the attack goes off, Elawi can use W again to get a quick second tentacle attack. Elawi also gets healed for 5% of her missing health every time a tentacle hits, so this is really good for early sustain in lane, and outplaying people in early fights. The lower you get, the better it is. The wave clear on Q is a huge strategy for Baduk. In fact, he maxes his ability first, and it makes his wave clear insane. Early on, it's great for CSing under tower, but later it can even kill a wave by itself. Elawi's biggest weakness early on is lack of mobility, so after he pushes the wave to the tower, Baduk moves to the river to ward for the enemy jungler. If he lands a good E, he instantly gets control of lane, and swaps from playing defensive to super aggressive, getting far up into the opponent's face if they try to contest the wave, happy to trade health with them since your sustain is better than most mid laners, and shove them into tower. If he misses E, he can still wave clear and look for an early base to buy his first component. Kindle Gem. Elawi has crazy low mana costs on all of her abilities, so getting this ability haste and health early on lets him continue to clear waves and take trades that enemies really struggle to win. At level 6, Elawi is now completely past the danger of early game. This is where Baduk is rewarded for his experience. Level 6 is your main early game power spike, and Baduk immediately uses it, walking under the enemy mid tower and using E on the enemy. This ability is stupid because it doesn't even do damage on this first cast, so Elawi doesn't get tower aggro. The enemy is quite likely to still fight you since you're playing super risky under their tower, but Elawi can set up a kill just with ult at this point, double stacking the damage on the enemy and the clone, and one-shotting them with the tentacles. Here is a crazy example that shows you just how good this is. In this game, Elawi has been solo killed twice in this lane. LeBlanc is a very hard matchup since she works great against immobile laners, and Elawi was playing a bit too greedy, but Elawi is insane at punishing roams, so when LeBlanc goes bot lane, Elawi stays even in gold, fast clearing the wave and collecting tower plates. Even two kills down, with no items yet, Elawi goes for this kill under tower, shocking the LeBlanc with some stupid damage, winning the fight and living with the healing, immediately getting a huge advantage from the mid diff. Elawi can now play aggressive all the time, against mages or ranged champions, Baduk walks up, uses Q and W to kill the entire wave, and forces the enemy to kill the wave under their tower. Eventually they'll run out of mana, but Elawi will not. A very common situation is landing an E to chunk the opponent out, or them running out of mana, which forces them out of lane, and lets Elawi take a tower plate or two with Demolish, and W for an auto reset. Since he can shove the wave, he can then rotate into the river to get objectives, spam pinging Herald or Dragon when he can do them. If the enemy jungler ganks him now, he can 1v2 easily. Landing E on an enemy, he aims to double up his damage by hitting both the clone and the champion with his full combo. That combo is ult, into W to make the tentacles attack again, into Q. It's that simple. Hitting the clone is just easier as it always spawns near you and your tentacles. So clone is the first priority. You can kill it, slow the enemy, and chase them down. But Duke even plays with the exhaust flash, so these 1v2s get even easier. When he is engaged on, he pops it immediately to reduce their damage and shred their resistances, forcing any squishy champion to flash away or die. Elawi mid is a true juggernaut. If you go close to her, she will kill you. But Elawi's ult has two very special uses. The first is ult flash, where you can redirect the damage to a new spot and surprise enemies. The animation starts in the first location, flash goes off, and then the enemies are suddenly hit and surrounded by tentacles, about to be burst down in just a couple of slaps. Elawi's ult can also be used to dodge CC. The ult has a few frames of immunity, meaning it will stop you getting knocked back or knocked up. So it stops these two, and for any other CC, the duration of it begins during the ult. So using ult during it will effectively make the CC shorter. The timer continues as your ult is going off. Same with your Q and your E. Neither of them are cancelled by CC, so you want to use them as you're about to get hit to ensure they'll still go off. Your W can get cancelled by CC, and if it does, then you lose a ton of damage from your tentacles. So save that until enemies have used their abilities. Fully upgrading the Q first, the waves die in one hit, and his tentacle damage is also upgraded thanks to this ability. You cannot be denied CS even as a melee mid laner. This Q is too good for killing the wave. His goal is 80 CS in 10 minutes, and tower plates if possible. A hidden interaction with Elawi tentacles is that when you use your E, they automatically attack once, and this levels up throughout the game, with the speed they attack only getting faster. At level 7 onward, the tentacles will always attack the clone twice during the duration, so it gets so much easier to kill. Level 7 is a hidden power spike, thanks to Elawi's focus on 
on staying in lane, pushing wave, she can even get a level lead on enemy mids, who take the risk to roam, and when they return they will feel her surprising damage. In mid game, Illawi is now the strongest she will ever get, but Duke goes into a side lane and looks for any fights he can find. Since he is a mid laner, this is even better, you're going to be laning against another mid laner. These are easy fights whatever the matchup, mages don't want to be in a side lane, they want to be staying mid and wave clearing, so Illawi has a huge advantage. Against melee champions like Silas or Yone, they will lose every single trade and every fight, it's just free gold for Illawi at this point. Illawi is now becoming a monster that can always get a kill in any fight. If enemies gank you, one of them will die every time, and most of the time, more of them will die and Illawi will survive. That's why it's such a scary champion. The healing on tentacles is relevant once again. This healing that works based on missing HP ramps up as Illawi gets low, so the lower she is, the harder she is to kill. This is why there are so many 1v3 situations with Illawi. She has a lot of health already, so when enemies dump their damage onto her, she keeps trading it back, and with enough tentacle hits, she outheals their damage, while doing a crazy amount herself. When he isn't destroying teams through this split pushing, he joins team fights. Illawi needs to get to these team fights early for one reason, tentacles. If you come in late like a normal bruiser and try to clean up, your damage will be nothing, and she also has no mobility so would get kited easily, so she has to rely on getting there first and controlling the area with tentacles to win fights. If you can do this, Illawi is a really great team fight champion, but Duke likes to frontline, being the target for enemies to engage on. This causes the enemies to funnel into you and thus into your tentacles for a huge burst of damage when you hit alt. The more enemies hit, the more tentacles that are spawned, and the more slams you can get, leading to even tanks getting shredded. Always fight near your tentacles, don't push too far up away from them, try to get enemies to come closer. He even plays fights slower than usual to ensure this happens, focusing the frontline only to guarantee he is near his tentacles, not diving as he would not have enough damage to kill them. You can pay attention to your passive cooldown to see if you can make a play. It may spawn just as you want to dive, so you can move up and use it to extend your damage and make the play work, otherwise you wait for your passive to come up before you advance. In late game, LOE falls off a lot. If you're ahead from fights, you'll be fine. In fact, Badoo can still go for the 1v3 side lane plays, even buying Hullbreaker to try and 1v9 end the game. But in the games where you're even and have strong scaling teammates to carry you, Badoo keeps team fighting, acting as a high damage frontline. He has the goal of going in, doing as much damage as possible, whether it kills him or not, setting up his team to clean up the fight. Sacrificing himself after hitting E into a big ult is fine. He takes all of their engage and leaves his team in a good position. Baduke made us a tier list for matchups. You can clearly see that melee champions are the easiest to beat. Roaming champions and most mages are all fine to lane against. The hardest champions are the ones with either point and click or AoE mobility denial, like Oriana with her ult or Victor with his W, so he's happy to ban any of these. In Season 12, Alawi Mid will be just as good as Season 11. The items she builds are either unchanged or even getting buffed. New Abyssal Mask now doesn't require any CC to work, so it could be a good option on her. Even building out of Kindle Gem, which Baduk buys every game anyway. Force of Nature has now also been changed, so it's another great magic resist option for Alawi to help her late game. So this strategy is great, but there are still some big issues with it that I found while watching about 25 of his games. First off, this guy cannot stop picking mages and losing LP. He keeps picking Victor with first strike and inting his LP away. It's like seeing his Anivia all over again. To me, this shows that if you have a single type of champion you're really good at, maybe adding a different style to your champion pool is not a good short-term solution. Learning a new class takes hundreds of games of practice, and Baduk really shows this. Baduk usually plays with Conqueror as his main rune, but First Strike is a possible new addition to this build. With Illawi using Q and lane so often for poke, as well as E to fish for clones, this rune could help Illawi mid accelerate through early game, as well as deal more early damage. This rune is thought to be mega OP right now in Korea, and really awful, terrible rune in the west, so in reality it's probably just pretty balanced. For Baduk's full Illawi mid build, he plays with a tanky setup, starting either Doran Shield against poke champions like Syndra, or Corrupting Potion against everyone else. First base for Kindle Gem to help him survive the early burst, then his first item is actually Sterex, not his mythic. Sterex first helps him a lot with tankiness, again to survive the burst damage and turn the fight around, thus overall increasing his damage. Next is the mythic, Frostfire Gauntlet. The slow is so great for landing your E and making enemies unable to dodge the tentacles. This is what makes this build easier. After this he upgrades Kindle Gem, either to Black Cleaver if the enemies have armor, Randuins against crit champions, or Spirit Visage against AP teams. Finally, buying tank items to make sure he can frontline. Gargoyles is ideal, letting him tank a full team. His current best runes are this Conqueror page. This page is best into melee champions on the enemy team to cause long fights. But against lots of ranged champions, he can also do a fleet page, which helps him survive lane. Baduk has a YouTube channel and a Twitch if you want to see more of him and tell him to play more Illawi. Link in the description, along with our Displate sponsor. Please check 
the art out as well. Thanks so much for watching, see you next Friday.